dudes. Thanks for hanging out and drinking with two dudes and a mic. I am your host, Mike, and as always, I'm sitting across from my favorite dude. Gus, what's going on today, man? I'm good, man. We've got uh, part of the plan here in the studio today. Absolutely, we do. We got part of the part of the plan. Part of the part of the plan. So it's like a, co- a half of the plan. Well, like, uh, no, there's five, so we'll, we'll two-fifths two fifths of the plan. Almost. Uh, but we do. In studio today, we have members from the band Part of the Plan, whose new single, Shelter, was just dropped. When did you guys drop that one? Uh, September 7th, I think it was. Yeah. September 7th. Let's go with that. That's <laughs> it. It's fresh off the presses. We've got guitarist Brian Santos and the front man, Cody Weldon. How are you guys doing? Pretty good, man. Pretty welcome. Pretty welcome. Good. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. No, thanks for coming out. So we're going to do our shots right off the bat because that's how we do it. We are drinking. Okay, so three of us are drinking the Smirnoff grapefruit. But the uh, badass over here, front man, is drinking the Crown Royal. <laughs> Crown Royal. Because that's how he does indeed. it. That's it. So everybody listening, all the dudes, male, female. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 And now we crack those beers open. Whoa. Remember what I was saying off air? This isn't that bad. Normally it's like it's a puddle <laughs> of Guinness just everywhere. So I've got London Pride and Guinness in front of me. Gus, what do you got? What do you think I have? <laughs> <laughs> fucking guy. All he'd ever do. Honest, honest lager. lager. Honest lager. Uh, what do you got, Brian? Got some uh, Molson Canadian here. Molson Canadian. Cody's got Angry, Angry Orchard. Orchard and Coke and Crown. Nice. So, guys, honestly, thank you for coming in. We appreciate you. I know it was. Uh, <clears throat> we booked it a while ago, so I'm glad you didn't forget about it. Yeah, of course. No, of course not. We've been going back and forth on details for a while. I thought you were going to get sick of us. <laughs> really? No, no, no. Honestly, like of all the of all the people I've messaged, you guys talked the least. Really? Oh yeah. What? I will say I have a bad habit of looking at something and going, I'm going to get back to that. And about three days later going, I'm going to get back to that. Yeah. Well, because I asked you, I said, are you guys, do you guys want to play a, a song? And, yeah. and nothing. I, I have didn't a reason use... for that. Okay. I have a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. We didn't know. We weren't sure if we were going to have an acoustic arrangement because it's not really something that we do often. Okay. We used to, uh, a long time ago, have like an acoustic set that we played. And we just always found that it like detracted and distracted from the brand we were going for that's yeah. fair so we, we we were just kind of blindsided and we're like do do we have an acoustic song yeah, yeah. so we, we did end up figuring something out or we're pretty excited to play it on the show because yeah. you guys uh like you're you're i don't know if you hate being compared to other bands some artists do but you've got a like a really solid breaking benjamin vibe and i fucking love breaking benjamin yeah. Thank you. And like Evergreen is the one that got me, and then Hell all your yeah. new stuff too. Like the Hell last yeah. the last few months. Thank oh you. my god! I appreciate that, man. Holy Thank you. shit! Interesting comparison of, to Breaking Benjamin. Um, are you familiar with our song "What I Deserve" at all? Yeah, so, I have all your albums. Yeah. Oh, so wow. I you. um I work as a producer and recording engineer. That's like my day job. I'm at a studio here in the city called Red Dragon uh, Studio. Mm-hmm. But um, I had been messaged by somebody from the states through a friend of mine that does uh, work there as well. And he was like, hey, uh, I got an artist that wants like a Breaking Benjamin vibe for their music. Can you like work something out for him? So I wrote a demo and it was an early version of what I deserve. And I pitched it to this guy and he's like, it's great. And he tried to get me to do it for free. Oh, no, and no, no. so that that relationship fizzled out and I was like, I'm just going to write a bridge. I know it's nice. a little heavy for what we're doing lately, but um, this, is, this is a part of the plan song now. Yeah. So the whole reason... <laughs> For the whole Breaking Benjamin vibe kind of came from that song. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, once that song happened, we were like, hey, we got something going here. Like, yeah. it's not like we're not ripping them off by any means, but like, it just has that vibe in it. I don't know. It works for us. And you know what? For happens. me, it's I love the uh, like the melodic sort of verse um, like that. That I don't know, like, especially with some of your singing, too. The way you do that, like melodic stuff, and then you get into the chorus and it's just fucking heavy. And it's yeah. like it's yeah. still melodic, too, but it's really like aggressive yeah. it's that breaking benjamin type of yeah. feel yeah. that's the the vibe that i like in music cool, so the, all your shit is <laughs> thank glad, you glad you're a fan and Redone, as soon yeah, as i as soon as i heard so evergreen's the one that i saw on facebook mm-hmm. um i think actually i think martin was the one that posted it posted Maybe. something I think we all shared it yeah. a bunch of somebody times, posted something yeah. about it and i saw it and i was like holy shit and i sent it to him yep. i'm like dude you got to listen to these guys uh, <laughs> like i want to get them on the show and then two three days later i, I think i messaged you yeah, you must have been. Yeah, because yeah. um, uh, we were the ones who were in touch about organizing yeah. this. And yeah. as soon as I saw it, I was like, I, I was so stoked. And then I looked you guys up, and um, your name was Drew Mike. So for a second, I was like, wait, <laughs> did, did Drew and Mike start a podcast? Like the old radio host. And I'm like, oh my god, is this like? Yeah. And, and then I found out it was something completely different. Well, I'm like, I'm aw, still stoked really. for this. this, yeah, is this is awesome, man. Uh, nice cover, guys. Yeah, nice. Save. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it was. It was pretty cool because. Uh, 
Uh, so a lot of people have said that you're not the first ones you made the comment yeah. a lot of people have made the comments to us and like it says uh and i think you did it purposely where it says mike drew yeah instead of drew mike yeah. so that doesn't say drew and mike it's mike right. and drew right um but that's like a hot debated thing too because they're like i call him gus and they're like well who the fuck is drew i'm like well gus and they're like well who's gus i'm like drew <laughs> <laughs> well, so, it's a, yeah it's an old high school nickname. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah yeah so drew even though i said sitting across from my favorite dude gus he is Drew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One and the same. Yeah. That's all right. that's it's still it's still funny how that worked out though that the names are that similar. <laughs> I yeah. know. Yeah. I think we on one of our first uh, test podcasts we uh, we actually had a whole conversation about it and talked about Drew and Mike and we did. Yeah. How one of them. Although one of them's not no longer living. No longer. So, oh, really? oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh, is it, is it Mike? Think, I think Mike's dead. I think it was Mike, yeah. Yeah, and oh. Drew's still alive, yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's all I Drew know is does... I looked you guys up and I was like, these guys look way too young. Man, they look great for their age. <laughs> <laughs> and they and sound, that's when it kind of clicked. They yeah. sound nothing like those other yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, but that that's that's what got me in was the, was the Evergreen because that's exactly that Breaking Benjamin type of feel, that, that flow to it. And then I started downloading all the other stuff and I was like, holy shit. And I sent him all the videos and all the, all the uh, songs. I'm like, dude, yeah, I think let's I, get these guys I, on. I want to say like I, I was busy with something else, so I kind of like avoided your message for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> he does that, but, uh, but not I, just with you guys, with everything. Oh, but no, like, oh, yeah. but then I sat down and I hit play, and I'm like, what? The, what the hell? You I sent started, me a thing. Yeah. You're like, these guys are fucking yeah, good. I'm I like, went through yeah, all thanks, yeah. Mr. Week Late. <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah. appreciate no, the and praise, I was stoked. Man. Yeah, we really yeah thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, that's pretty solid. So, <laughs> going to all that stuff, we're gonna listen to some later. Yeah, yeah, sure, and maybe play one live too. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so. Having said all that about listening to some of the songs and playing them live, uh, when you when you try to write something, like what's your what's your direction? Like, is, do you have an end goal of what you want to achieve? It depends on the song. Some of them, a lot of the times, what I go for is my demo should be the thing that makes it to final record. I kind of just I get into a flow, I get some ideas together, and I work them through in my head for a little while, and. It, one of two things happens. One, I sit down, I record a song, and we have a song. Or two, I sit down, I record it, I send it to everybody, and then we workshop it back and forth. And so that's kind of where like most of our music comes from, is like, starts with me, I produce something, pass it around. Right. And um, sometimes our other guitar player, Dan, comes in and pitches stuff just in the band chat, and we end up workshopping it instead. So that's a slightly different approach. But for the most part, the goal is to sit down one session, have a song, it's done. And Holy shit! Yeah, it's we work really, really quickly on yeah. music because we at the beginning of our band we started like a place called Flying took us what like two years? Yeah, no, yeah. no, not a place called Flying. A place called uh, Flying that, was yeah. about uh eight months to a year yeah and but our first place. ep find your place took us two years and after that experience we're like we can't do this yeah we can't, can't spend us. this long on music so like for example what i deserve was almost entirely written and all we had to do was add a bridge so that was like two sessions holy shit yeah compare that to evergreen though and there are probably like six different arrangements of that song really that didn't yeah. make it to final uh production which is really strange for us but I mean, it worked out, right? Oh, yeah. And there's the other side of the spectrum where I'm Coming Down was literally written in three hours. And, yeah. And, and all we did, like, we had an, a different chorus on it, actually. And then we changed that chorus, and that probably only took another hour. Like, Cody kind of mm -hmm. just did it himself. So that song literally only took us four hours just after a band practice one day. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> there's, so. there's actually a, a kind of interesting story about that song. It's, it's so far, apart from Evergreen, our most successful song. And at least short term, it is our most successful song in terms of growth. Uh, it got us on a Spotify exclusive playlist, like a curated one by yep. Spotify itself. And it's funny because it's a session. The session is called, before it had a name or anything, it was called Spotify Demo 1. Because we, <laughs> we had this idea of making, sh making short songs at a specific formula, uh, basing it off of the structure that worked in like hip-hop for the last two years, where it's just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, punchy, catchy, get out right and we're like i wonder if this would work and the first song we tried for it Works. caught spotify's attention Holy shit. Yeah. which so, is really well, interesting so and, that's uh, but that's not algorithm right that's like somebody like an editor listens yeah, to a bunch yes. of music and they're like holy shit i want this on there exactly but brian yeah. can go more in depth with that because he's the one who pitched it yeah so yeah i pitched it through a distributor and i just got an email and it was crazy because the night before i'm like my goal for this year with our music is to get on one spotify like official playlist and yeah. literally the day after i'm having coffee at my desk and my phone goes 
off and it's Spotify and they're like, Hey, like your songs on an exclusive playlist. You can see that playlist with this link. I'm like, get out of here. There's yeah. no way. And it's been, up, it's been up there ever since. Like yeah. it's been there for like three months yeah. and it's oh, close to like 10,000 plays at this point. Yeah. And that, I use that playlist uh, rotates music a lot. I use Deezer <laughs> for music Deezer. instead of Spotify. Yeah. It's, just, it's the same thing. It's uh, but they go through SoCan yeah. uh, mm-hmm. and it was, uh, I don't know, just at the time I bought this. It's like Netflix. You can download as much as you want, well, but you guys good. are like, you have so much of your stuff up on here and mm-hmm. that's where I downloaded everything. Hit favorites on your stuff too. Cause like, Man, I think everything's up there. Yeah. 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 Everything is yeah, yeah. yeah so the new Thank record you. the the i'm not normal am i first of all it took me like because i'm you know i'm not the brightest it took me like eight <laughs> minutes to read the first word yeah yeah <laughs> is that a typo or is it no like um, i'm not normal <laughs> it's all one so word so yeah. if you look at all the titles on that so on that album too they're all yeah. written in the same format right and um it, i kind of i kind of nicked the idea from billy eilish Okay. There's this there's this whole like really emo movement with really atmospheric moody pop music that I was trying to draw from when I wrote that EP and um that actually that EP start to finish I did in a week. What the and hell? um the rest of the band actually sorry to throw everybody under the bus wasn't really involved. Yeah. Um and uh it it was kind of on the challenge of one of uh one of my coworkers where He's like, um, man, your music would be so cool if you just did this. And I'm like, well, isn't it cool now? He's like, if you just did this. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, fine. And then I did it. He's like, yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's, that's awesome. I'm like, yeah, it's a, a, it's a band thing now. And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I kind of, I, I, I wrote it in a week because I was just like, okay, I can make that. And so I, I nicked the, the pop sound from these kinds of records and you, you hear that in the fact that it's it's really synthy, it's all clean vocals, it's really, really moody and and dark. All the lyrics cover like some pretty emo stuff if you get into them. And so that's that's why the naming is like that. I was trying to kind of fit into that yeah. spectrum of music online. Fair. Yeah. 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 I sent you uh, I sent you all that stuff too. Yeah. Yeah fucking it's on like in my car too because uh my car has like the subwoofer in the back uh it's Hell it's yeah. factory like it was it came with the car yeah um but like the sound system's so good and listening to those songs so the mastering because i was gonna ask you because you worked at polaris for a while i did and now you're at red dragon yep right i also worked for slr for about a year you worked with marty? marty yeah holy yeah, shit. yeah i was uh, i was a house engineer for him for about a year okay so that that's i think the next question doesn't even need to be asked the next question was, do you do the, all the mixing, editing, mastering, everything? Or all like, the, do the other one, guys kind of sit in and help out? 100% of it. They kind of trust me. I'll, I'll send them mixes and they might like give some criticisms on like, oh, this, this part could come up. Maybe this could be a little bit more uh, exciting. Right. Um, but for the most part, I just kind of sit down and I blitz them out. Yeah. So. I just, a little uh, side uh, sidetrack here. Uh, Red Dragon Studio. That's, uh, is that Richie Nix? Yeah. Richie yeah. On, yeah, yeah. On, on Howard. He's got sure. videos all over YouTube of yeah, him he's, well, recording yeah, and great. stuff. Yeah, he had a couple of pretty big songs there, like back in our high school days. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah, yeah. Uh, in my head was like his yeah. Yeah, one yeah, yeah. huge single, yeah. and he had a good follow up, right? Uh, he did. Yeah, I mean, he had a bunch of good follow ups afterwards. He yeah, some, and Fearless yeah. did well too. Fearless, he had some yeah. huge he press a, there back yeah. in the yeah, like he, he was. He was winning some awards and, and mm-hmm. making his way up. Oh, he got signed to Universal Republic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and even even amazing. nowadays he's still he's doing stuff behind the scenes. Like he yeah. was at the BET Awards with some like popular rappers. Uh, yeah, last year. Um, Red yeah. Dragon actually um, did a uh, a live um, like mashup for uh, Lil Baby and City Girls, and I can't remember who the other uh, the other rapper on it was, but it was it was three rappers. One of our friends was on the live crew, and they're like, "We really need this mashup. It's got to be great." And so we put it together for them. And yeah, we were on the BET Awards in 2019. Nice. Oh, <laughs> shit. You, you don't believe that kind of stuff happens around yeah. here, but like, there's we, more industry yeah. than people think. We, we've said a hundred times that the the talent pool in at Windsor Essex County yeah. is just mind boggling. Like, I, I don't know if there's another city of this size that has such like an rich um, talent. Yeah, such yeah. rich, immense of talent. Yeah. But you know what? Like, we didn't. I mean, I'll, I won't speak for you. I didn't know that it was that deep until we started the show. Yeah. Because we started the show, and then we're starting to get, like, people are just sending us demos and like, hey, we, you know, can I come on your show? And here, check out, you know, check out my stuff here. Check out this. Check out that. And some of it's really good. Yeah. Some of it's garbage. But <laughs> but the really yeah. good stuff, you're just like, holy shit. Like, how is all this coming out of Windsor? Like, yeah. it's such a small city that 
Yeah. Like, it's hard to fathom that that much talent comes out of here. We, I mean, you expect when people send you stuff that, uh, you know, 95% of it's going to be terrible. Right. <laughs> but uh, I would say we're more like 60% of it's great. Yeah. yeah That's a good ratio. Yeah, yeah it is It is really yeah. good. Yeah. Some of the stuff's really, really good. Yeah. But... I don't know. I just never expected it out of the city. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I've, I've always, I've always had a place in my heart for the city and the talent that uh, that I've seen throughout the years. And every every band we've had on this show is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Just saying. Yeah. Well, not because you. you're sitting here in front thank of us, yeah. but even the ones that are not, and they were on here before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna put crap on the show. So yeah, yeah. I appreciate yeah. That. that. Thank you. Yeah. And then, like I said, I'm addicted to your song. So yeah. it is what it is. Um, <laughs> So the two of you, you guys recorded uh, on uh, Of Two Meanings with Within Shadows. Yes. I want to ask you, recording, like doing a, a collaboration, is it a lot harder to do than it is to make your own song? Um, I would say no. I really, really enjoy collaboration. It's um, something I had to come around to in my professional life because like, I was very strict. This is how we're going to do it. And I kind of lightened up on that and everything got better. Yeah. So. With Sean, um, he's a friend of ours. Yeah, he's and, a good friend uh, of ours, yeah. I reached out to him because he's always been hitting us up at the, in the band and everything, and we've always just been like talking back and forth. And I was like, yo, I like your music. Let's just do something together. And um, so him and I actually sat down and wrote the song from scratch together. It took about three sessions, I would say, so maybe about six to eight hours. We got something down, and we were really digging it, and we're like, you know what would be great? Let's, let's put a guitar solo on it. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's get Brian to play on it. And so Brian came in, we wrote a solo with him in the session. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go home and learn it. And then he came back and uh, sent me the files for it. I'm like, this is not the same solo. He's like, trust me. <laughs> um, and, and it's the one that made it to the record. Yeah, is so it really? I, yeah. I completely rewrote it. I was like, you know what? I can write something better than yeah. this. Like, I got this. How but, long does it take you to write like a solo like that? Oh, man, I take forever to do anything, honestly. Um I mean, it probably took me a couple of days to finalize it, but to record it, it took me, I don't know, like a week. And it just because like this one section, basically what had happened is Cody and I kind of like had this like cool, like note or melody kind of going for it. And he programmed it on a piano and there's this like crazy run. So he programmed it and he's like, learn it. I'm like, come on, dude. What? Like, yeah. So I had to sit there and, and I had like a metronome going and the... It's like it's programmed. It's a computer <laughs> melody going on, and I'm sitting there trying to play it like all like robotic, like. And I'm, oh. in, in my defense, we did check if all of it was playable. We just didn't have it up to speed. Exactly. We yeah. agreed that yes, this is doable. It, yeah. just, it was just really hard. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but those are the solos that always turn out the coolest. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's stuff that you don't think about because you're sitting there programming yeah. it on the computer. We right? we did so. the exact same thing on a on a, a yet to be released track that. Uh, Work, that turned out amazing. I think it's one of my favorite solos you've you've played. So, yeah. so, so we're not gonna talk about that, are we? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Some unreleased stuff. You'll, you'll hear <laughs> we, about. We it got soon. we got some stuff in the pipeline, and we're we're uh, kind of planning some big stuff with it. It's it's finished. It's been done for like two months now, and yeah. uh, we're just, we're just trying to find the right people. Yeah. That, that's all. We'll leave it at that. Hey, uh, Gus. Yeah. Pour that guy another crown rail. <laughs> We're gonna get this out of him before the night's over. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, um, that's always you're gonna have to come back. Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah, that's you're gonna it. Have to come back yeah. when you got it. Yeah, You'd be more yeah. than happy to for sure. Um, plot twist: If you had watched my stream yesterday, you would have heard the song actually. Ooh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> so you might have to check me out on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash wraithboundca, and uh, the vod is still up. So yeah, you might yeah. be able to check that. The, the video on demand is still up. It's the first song in the vocal set. There are a lot of technical issues. It's my first music stream, but. Uh, if you're interested, go, yeah, go for sure. We'll, we'll check yeah. that out. Yeah. Fuck yeah, probably after this. After gonna, we shut this off, I'm gonna have to figure out what Twitch is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're dude, so I'm about, old. I'm about to open your eyes, homie. <laughs> oh, Twitch is the best, dude. God, you're so old. I know what Twitch is. I'm Switch. like, uh, I'm like four months younger than you. Yeah, yeah. You know all about <laughs> it. I usually watch Alex Zedra, and she's big into gaming. She does like a lot of Call of Duty stuff, and she's really good. Actually, if you play Call of Duty, she's Mara in Call of Duty. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, but back to the, the collaboration versus your own stuff. If you could collaborate with somebody, anybody on the planet, oh, wow. who would you want to be with? That's a, oh. that's a crazy question. Uh, Living or dead? Go ahead. I'll let you go first. So I have a long list of people. <laughs> um, I would love to work with uh, Mark Holcomb, a periphery on songwriting. Okay. I think that would be amazing. I think it'd be incredible to work with um, Adam Nolly Get Good who's a producer. He did work for Periphery, but also worked for a, a bunch of other bands. Most yeah. recently did Devin Townsend, a Canadian art, uh, artist. Oh, wow. If you're familiar with him. 
he just did i think it was transcendence was the record he did with him and i would love to just as a producer work with uh nolly that would be amazing but as far as like if i could get like a vocal collaboration i would love to get like courtney laplante from um spirit box thank you the name was eluding me <laughs> all i could think of was icy aura because i just recorded them shout out to but, the boys uh, shout out to the boys but uh, no courtney laplante or uh marcus from north lane would be amazing oh, hell yeah and See, then uh, I was hoping you would say Ben Burnley from Breaking Benjamin. I love the two of you guys. I love song? Breaking Benjamin, and I love Ben. I don't know how that. I don't know how that would work. I, I don't know enough about. I don't know that. enough about the way he works. The the other people I mentioned are people that like, I've seen in interviews and I've interacted with a few of them. Yeah. So I'm like these these would be great. I'd love to make friends. Well, I'd love hold to up, work hold with up. them. You've interacted with Ben. Oh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, whoa, okay. what? When I was when I was very young, okay, I met no, no, Benjamin no, no. Burnley. You're mis- what about Heavy MTL? Oh my God! When I was also not very young, I yeah. met Benjamin <laughs> Burnley. Okay, you answer your question, and then I'll I'll, I'll yeah, tell yeah. those okay. stories. Who do you want to work with? So I grew up on a lot of like classic metal, classic rock stuff. I'm a big Judas Priest fan. Megadeth. Big Megadeth fan. He's got big the shirt on. Def Leppard fan. Yeah. I love all those bands. Um, Def Leppard would be awesome. Just to even sit behind uh, their producer and just like see how they did all the vocals and all that kind of stuff. Um, That's Mutt Lang, right? Mutt Lang, yeah, yeah, he's awesome, and he did so many other awesome records too, yeah. right? So, uh, yeah, that would be cool. And Judas Priest, I'm a big fan of Priest. Um, yeah, that would just be cool. Just any sort of collaboration, so any of them. Yeah, yeah, any any of those guys, guitar players. Like, I mean, Rob Halford's a fucking monster at singing. Like, he's. Do you have favorite guitar player? I have a couple. Uh, I'm a big Michael Shanker fan. Uh, he played with UFO. Oh uh, yeah, okay. yeah. So and they're like '70s classic rock. Yeah. Like a lot of my soloing is based on his playing. He does a lot of cool like major and minor like flipping that on its head, and I love that kind of stuff. Um, I actually have a story about meeting him, but I don't know if we have enough time to. Uh, we have all the time. We, we have want. all the yeah. time. We okay, all really. If quick. your story sucks, yeah. we cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Toronto. I, I stole, I, I just got my license and I stole my parents' car. Sorry, mom. Uh, she thought, yeah, we'll sleep. yeah your mom's Wait, listening to this show. You're doing 170 all the way home. No, that's you're a different story. Yeah, 170 on the 401. That's a different story. Uh, so I stole my mom's car. I told her I was sleeping over at her friend's for the weekend. And uh, I went to Toronto, I dragged my one buddy from Kitchener with me. And, uh, and I wanted to meet him. I was going to the show. I bought tickets, but I wanted to meet him. And, uh, so after the show's done, I run outside the venue and he's in the car and it's like, it's February, it's snowing, it's cold as balls. Like it's just freezing. <laughs> and uh, I get to the car and this guy's in front of me. He's, he's got like a hundred records that he's trying to get signed at the door, at, <laughs> like the car door, right? He's trying to drive off. Yeah. And uh, I finally get to him and I just wanted him to sign a, a truss rod cover to my guitar. Right? Yeah. I wanted to frame it. And he looks at me. And this guy's German as hell. He's just like, see you later, alligator. And he just drives off. And I'm like, dude, I just waited here for like 10 minutes. Like, come on. But uh, yeah. That's so it. you that never was, got one. I never got one, no. But uh, yeah, fantastic guitar player. And I think I was supposed to tell a couple of stories. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the first one, I met Benjamin Burnley when I was like, oh God, I was probably... 12, 13 years old. So about three years ago? <laughs> yeah, about three years ago, yeah. No, so I uh, I grew up um, with Breaking Benjamin literally on a CD in my house that got played every Saturday when we cleaned the house. And it was Phobia. Every single oh, week we listened to hell. Phobia. And so um, we, my parents got me tickets for my birthday and it was VIP tickets. And the VIP situation, whoever was running it, did not inform the band of anything it was supposed to be like meet and greet for an hour hang out with the band you were supposed to get some merch you were supposed to get a whole bunch of stuff yeah we show up there the band didn't know about it the drummer or yeah the drummer here mom, we go a drummer story. no the, <laughs> the drummer's mother was one of them with the vip tickets what she's the reason we met the band because really? she called Chad. Wait, like, your you... drummer's band? No, your drummer's no, mom? the drummer from Breaking Benjamin. Yeah, yeah. what <laughs> was in the crowd of people? Because like that's that's where she was told to go. She, to she called Chad. She's like, you to get the son. fuck out here right now. <laughs> These people are freezing, and they're he- all here to see you. And he's like, what are you talking about, mom? She's like, I don't give a shit if you know what I'm talking about. So he gets there. He gets the whole band over. We get pulled into a, like, a random room on the side. And I just wanted to get a CD signed. And I said, what's up to the rest of the band? And I get to Ben Burnley. And I'm like, 
<laughs> hand it to him. I can't even speak. Yeah. I can't even speak. How old were you? I was like 12 or 13. Maybe even younger. And, Holy uh, shit. Because I went to my first concert when I was 11. Uh, my first rock concert when I was 11. And, um, so well, three was years it? ago? Yeah, four, what, four, it was Tool. Four years. <laughs> I went to see Tool first. Oh, oh, fuck. I've my, never seen them yet. Wasn't my first. Yeah, that was really? my first rock concert, but it was my second concert. My first concert was actually Hillary Duff. No way. No, You've yeah. seen Hillary Duff? Yeah, dude, I still have the glow stick. But anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> My, my I two, have the glow stick. My, yeah, two, my two first concerts were uh, Sarah McLaughlin and Jan Arden. So that's, that's cool. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Sarah McLaughlin is sick. Yeah, Mine was Red Hot but... Chili Peppers. Oh, that's anyway, cool. That was I, my first one. I couldn't. What was yours? Uh, Scorpions and Cinderella. Of course, oh, yeah. from oh, the yeah. Judas Priest yeah. Megadeth. Yeah. That's only because my mom wouldn't let me go to the Primus Screen Day show. That was a fucking no shit. Show. <laughs> <laughs> I um, went to that one. Yeah, you did. <laughs> that was but, a great show. No, I, I couldn't even speak to him when we walked out, and it was it was a good experience. Was he a nice guy? I don't know. I didn't talk to him. Oh, but I mean, like every they were all nice they were else? all lovely. Yeah, okay. they were all lovely. And they all they all said said what's up. But the second story is a lot funnier, and yeah. I'm gonna need your help with some of the details. Sure. So we went to Heavy MTL. Okay. What's that? Heavy Montreal. Heavy Montreal. Yeah. It's a festival up in uh, Montreal, and it's so, absolutely amazing every say, single year. That's if you actually have, a bucket list. I've, yeah. I've never made go, it to that show, but it's go. a bucket list I've show. Been, yeah. I've go. been seven years in a row. Yeah. It's Incredible amazing. every time. The city is amazing. Yep. So, so what and, is it like? It's a heavy metal fest? Yeah. 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 Essentially, uh, there's this little island in between, like, because there's a like, river that runs through the city, and it's like in the river, this island, and that's where the festival is. Yeah, it's the part festival of Jean Drapeau, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's in this, like, national park, but they set up a bunch of stages and you the only way to get there is like subway you could drive but it's just a shit show there are so. like four or five oh, stages so it's outdoor yeah. fast it's outdoor and it's fucking awesome fucking hell. um but anyway we're there and uh we got front fucking row yeah. for this and we're at the barricade and i'm sitting there like trying to figure out what's going on because my eyes are burning and I'm, I'm starting to like i can't see i can't keep them open i'm like what the fuck is going on and i kept cleaning my glasses thinking like oh maybe something got on my glasses and it was just making it worse and worse until eventually, like, I don't know, 15 minutes before their set, I was like, I have to jump this barricade and I need to go to a tent. I can't, I can't see. I can't keep my eyes open. What? And it turns out what had happened was I had coated, like I had put sunscreen on and it was leaking into oh, my fuck. eyes yeah. and I was cleaning my glasses, but it had gotten on my shirt. So every single time I put my glasses back on, it made it worse. Holy shit. And I mean, I mean like I literally wasn't able, I like, I didn't know what was happening. So I didn't wash my eyes out or anything. Right. Nothing fucking worked. So I went to the medical tent and I was behind the stage and, um, Ben walks by and I don't re- remember exactly what the exchange was, but, um, he was flirting with my, uh, my nurse. <laughs> <laughs> he was flirting with my nurse. Sorry, Ben. Cody's throwing me under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, well, it was just like some playful banter I don't know he, it, it was pretty funny Fair enough And I don't remember what he said to me I remember What did he Okay. He said he wasn't feeling too too well While flirting with this nurse Like he wanted oh, like no. her help kind of deal right? And then and then Cody had said something like You better be feeling well Like we got front row for you guys <laughs> like, <laughs> like, We're here to see you You better be feeling well Like get up on that stage man <laughs> Yeah, and so they let me out of the tent. I, I got everything cleaned out. And I actually, I think I missed like the first song or something. Yeah. And I came back and the people who were there at the barricade with Brian were nice enough to let me back to where I was front row. And um, I think it was an exchange because they're like, we just want to be front row for the band after. Yeah, the one. band after was Disturbed. Oh, so, fuck. So, so, so the we last were like, three we've, bands. we've been there for Disturbed before. So yeah. we're like, we don't care about that. You can have it. So yeah. they let me come back. So we should play one of their tracks too, though. Yeah, we should. Uh, we we've got, you brought some uh, music for us, right? We did. All right, so you want to throw throw that yeah. one on? Yeah. What do we listen to? I'm coming, I'm coming down. down I'm please. coming down. I'm yeah. coming down. Sweet. Well, I'm coming down. Kind of just turned into our baby. So yeah. we're like, Done. check it out. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, all right.
That uh, that's one of my favorites. That's, that's the one I've been listening solid. to. Yeah, that's I love that song. It's that heavy, like melodic, and that voice. Yeah. I told you, it's. I don't want to compare you to Breaking Benjamin, but you sound so good. Like, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I look for in music, and yeah. that's fucking sick. Absolutely, Cody's yeah. the man. I agree. Yeah. All right, guys, here we go. So we're at the middle of the show, so we like to do a mid-show shot. So we are gonna do the same. Are mm-hmm. we all drinking the same? Nope, I'm, I'm still drinking Crown. Yeah, you guys are still drinking everything else. We're all else. doing vodka, you're doing Crown? Okay, yeah, that's yeah. it. So here we go. All the dudes listening, male, female. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Want to grab your Cheers. Shot glass Cheers. And obviously, it's followed by... You guys already opened yours, you... Yeah, I already opened my beer. I forgot how the show worked. <laughs> that's <Yeah. laughs> That happens when you drink a little bit too much. So normally, what are you guys drinking? Like, what's your go-to drink? Um, When I'm not on the show? Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, Um. so... I have a few go-tos. I really like Summer's Bee. They have a... The, I tried the pear-flavored Summer's Bee lately, and it's... Okay, so Summer's Bee is apple cider, right? Right. The pear cider is, like, an apple Summer's Bee without that, like, kind of bad, like, citrusy, like... Yeah. Really acidic taste. And the nice thing is, if you have any kind of reflux, which I kind of... I have... I struggle with reflux. The pear Summer's Bee hits me so much lighter than the apple because it's just not as acidic. So I've been drinking pear summers bee. Don't they have like orchard. a is it is it blackberry or like a They have several there's Yeah, yeah there's bla- a there's blackberry there's like a and there's okay. mango. I've never Dude, had that. Dude, the mango is delicious. You'd never expect it cuz it sounds like a weird thing to be like a beer or a cider, but it's like it's not like a wine cooler or anything like that, but it's really sweet and it's delicious. It doesn't taste like beer. It's really really good. I really recommend it. If I had known, that's I would have I would have picked it up, but I was looking. It's hard was, to find. Yeah, when I was shopping for you guys, so I actually couldn't find regular Summers Bee. Yeah, I could only find um, the. Uh, Is it the, sold out? The different. I could find the different so flavors, but not regular. When Summers you Bee. when you go uh, Summers Bee, they don't stock a lot of it in the LCBOs around here. Yeah. So when you go in to pick it up, um, if it's not the the farther away from it is from a stocking day, the more likely it is to be completely sold out and. Uh, that's why, like, I got into Angry Orchard because I still wanted, you know, cider once in a while, and a lot of the time, Summer's Bee is just not available. I just figured the apples weren't in season. No, it's, <laughs> it's all of them, all four. That's what's crazy. That's yeah. a terrible drummer. As, drink, as far as um, liquor, though, Martin just, would have approved of that. Comment. He would, would have saying. approved of that. <laughs> I'm just comment. saying, fuck that comment. guy. <laughs> um, but as far as like uh, straight liquor, because uh, when I'm when I'm trying to go ham, that's that's what we're going for. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I really like uh, there's uh, B- flavored Bacardi. Either the raspberry or just straight Bacardi, like the regular Bacardi. Yeah. Um, Crown Royal, CC, and Weisers are all great. I just, I just love whiskey. You're just like yeah. a fucking sink. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you pour down me, I will drink. Um, except birthday cake vodka. I cannot do that what? anymore. What? Yeah. yeah. Any, you never heard of that? Okay. You, you, ever have, you ever have like a cake pop? Yes. It's Isn't like this... it's like one of those like donuts. Like it tastes like it's like a donut on a stick. That you oh get yeah, like yeah. Okay. I thought you meant a drink. Is that no, no, pink, no. pink Whitney. Is that what that? That's vodka. Though. All I know is the vodka. If you drink it straight, tastes like that thing. I put a whole bottle away once in high school, and I can't drink it anymore. Oh. Uh, bad experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like any yeah. of those, like the s'mores. All my mm-hmm. friends, if you're listening, they're all cringing right now because we all had a night with s'mores, <laughs> uh, vodka. But yeah, any of that stuff is kind of. Does gross. it really taste like s'mores? It. it does but it's like it's kind of bad yeah because like you want sometimes you just want to mix you don't want to just drink it straight right yeah yeah. yeah. And then you try to mix it with coke and it's just it like just doesn't this, it doesn't anything. work like s'mores coke like come on you only do that with shots unless you're doing like maybe you mix it with a cure or something yeah. i've tried the uh chocolate vodka and it does not taste like chocolate no it tastes like gross feet like it's <laughs> just disgusting yeah. it's the worst thing ever yeah. what I usually you, what I'll... do you go to uh typically i don't like mixing like uh like coke or anything in my drinks just because it's like I don't know. I try to avoid sugar as much as possible. Um, but That's yeah, James. thinner than I am. <laughs> uh, straight Jameson is usually my go to. That's like whenever Jameson's we're like, uh, good too. yeah, whenever we're partying and just, uh, or that or Jack, whiskey. I, I don't know. I'm pretty like open except for tequila. I had tequila I don't once. Like tequila either. And I could not remember Jack. Here shit. we go. Go well, ahead. So. Your say, fucking speech of the tequila you have on the shelf. I'm just going to say tequila, tequila, like Mexican, proper. 100% agave Mexican yeah. tequila is great. Isn't it agave? Agave. Whatever. Agave. Yeah. It is agave. Yeah. But you can drink that, like, you can put that in a whiskey glass and drink that, like, 
like it's a whiskey. <sighs> when you when you're drinking like Jose Cuervo or whatever or, or any of those, it's it's super watered down. It's very bitter. Yeah, it does uh, not taste good. He does. struck a chord with this guy. Yeah. Well, Every time it comes up, I'm true, like, here yeah. we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you ever have the chance to go to Mexico and go to like proper tequileria and like try real Mexican tequila, do it. I've never right. had straight Mexican tequila, but um, I have gone to Dominican and Cuba, and obviously those are not Mexico, and I'm not. I'm just drawing a comparison because yeah, yeah. they're all in kind of South America. Yeah. Um, I have had tequila drinks there, and there's just something about what they do with it, whether it's the actual drink itself or the way they mix it, that it's like the only time I've ever liked uh, tequila drinks. Really? It, yeah. it tastes so much better. Because like, I, I won't drink tequila just yeah. like in Windsor. I just yeah. No? It. See, I will. I don't care. I'll, hold up. I will, especially when I was single, I will if the girls are drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> I will, but I won't like it. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I like the effects, not necessarily <laughs> yeah. the drink. But here's the thing. You don't start with tequila. No. Right? No. You start with a bunch of other shit, and tequila gets thrown in the mix. You're like, oh, fucking whatever. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. After yeah. you've had a few, mm-hmm. who cares? Yeah. Who yeah. I, I try not to, to mix too many different alcohols. Yeah. That's how you get really sick. Or at least that's how I get really sick. What do you mean? Like uh, like beers and liquors, or just different color liquors? Beer before liquor, never sicker. Liquor before beer, you're in the clear. So you end a night with beer. You end a night with something lighter. However, I also try not to mix dark and light liquor, as I found, um, especially when you start throwing different kinds of soda in the mix, it, I just get really sick. Really, yeah. really sick. So I, I just try to avoid mixing alcohols in general. But if I'm going DT with my friends, like, I mean, it's going to happen. Well, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I it is what it is. I think for we've me, all mixed some yeah, liquors we, we mixed here some tonight. Stuff. For me, yeah, it's, I mean, it's sugary it's drinks. Beer ground for me. Oh, Fair. Yeah. Like yeah. Sugary yeah. drinks you, kill you? Yeah, sh- sugar. Like, if you do, like, those oh, those Mike Hard Blue Freeze or whatever, oh, those they're ice. so sweet. They're they so taste, good, they taste great. Yeah. But they give you the worst hangover. Ice does 100%. Yeah. Smirnoff ice tastes like shit. Yeah. I don't it's, like it. I've never I don't had mind it, ice, actually. Oh. I used to drink that all the time in high school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the high so, school. So, like, last year. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Three years ago. <laughs> uh, but, no, you won uh, You won the scholarship for the U? Which one? <laughs> oh. I, that's a humble brag, but, like, straight subtle, up. So, subtle flex. Let, so, me go, let me go to my notes. Uh, um, Common Ground Scholarship, yes, University of yes, Wizard, 2018. That. Actually, that was an interesting one. Um, because I got to hang out with the uh, president of the university, Alan Wildeman. I don't. I think Wildeman may have retired. I don't. I haven't really kept up with you, but um, I remember a lot of people were like, like especially like the the students and stuff, just did not care for his whole thing. And when I met him, he was like a really nice guy. Um, we bonded over recording. He showed me some of his music actually, which was really cool. Um, it was like really. Uh, like this almost bluesy folk music, just him and a guitar, and it was it was really pretty, and um, yeah, we we ended up like hanging out for an hour and a half or something like that in his office. I was only supposed to be there for like fifteen minutes, and he's like, <laughs> "Yo, this kid, he can he can hang." Like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Alan, if you're out there, uh, you should listen to this podcast and uh, have me back in your office. It'd be a good there time. There you go. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I won that one. I went to University of Windsor. I wanted to go to London, but University of Windsor offered me all the same scholarships as london and uh i didn't have to, i could live at home and you know yeah i came out of university debt free because the, the school paid for two-thirds of my tuition right um between entrance so, scholarships and stuff like that it was it was honestly i can't thank them enough for the like financial benefit that they gave me but um <laughs> <laughs> use code uh code cody weldon for 10 percent off your <laughs> tuition <laughs> like is this a plug i mean no <laughs> okay. right. I, I i i liked my experience i loved my profs i loved the friends that i made there and um, I wouldn't necessarily trade it for anything because it kept me where I am. Yeah. I am where I am because I stayed in Windsor. But um, I would definitely say, depending on what you're going into, I would recommend or not recommend the University of Windsor. Because just like anything else, some aspects of it are amazing and incredible and some aspects of it are not. And it depends on what the student is looking for. So for music? Music, I would say it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a great education degree, music is absolutely an amazing degree and they've got a uh, really good concurrent program if you're looking to get into choral music and vocal music it's an incredible pro uh, incredible program but um it's small it doesn't have a huge amount of resources if you're looking for a way to get into orchestras and things like that it's not necessarily the most well connected um i'm sure my profs are hating me for saying that but (laughs) there are like anything else it some of it has benefits and some of it has drawbacks yeah i would say if you're into choral music if you're into 
um, education, it's one of the best schools you can go to that I'm aware of. If you're looking to get into actual classical performance or just performance in general, as well as theory, like the academic written work of it, it's not necessarily the best as it doesn't have a uh, specific theory program. So we found a lot of info on him during the research. Uh, the only thing I found on you is your girlfriend's name is Megan. Megan, yes. Megan? Yeah, sorry, Megan. Megan. That's <laughs> What's up, Megan? <laughs> You're like very hidden. I am. I, I'm a very private person. So even even to my bandmates, like, uh, I mean, you brought up my girlfriend, but I, I think it was that... Like six, you that's dated for like th- six months we, before yeah, you told us yeah, that you were together. I dated her that's for, the only thing I could find on you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I could tell you a bit of my background, I guess. I, uh, I currently live and I've grown up in uh, Leamington. Ontario. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, I know. It's a very unfortunate. I'm also sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Good old tomato cap. We're trying to get him out of there as yeah. soon as possible. Um, yeah, I went to Cardinal Carter High School. It was all right. Um, it, was all right. it was all right. Yeah, I mean, my the whole high school thing, like, I, I didn't really take, well, I can't say I didn't take away much, but I think, like, in terms of, like, music and stuff, I started playing guitar and drums when I was in grade 12. So I was already, like, on Later my way out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was very fortunate to be a part of that school simply because of the talent shows and stuff. They have a big like auditorium, big stage, and the talent pool from that school was ridiculous. Because you went to school um, with like Justin, Justin the Zaccato, Rafool, Billy Rafool. Rafool. I was just going to say all, both those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all those guys. Uh, like the drummer in our band, Martin, uh, Kyle, our bass player, we all came from the same school. We all played the same talent shows. We all hung out backstage. Wow. Like just that, that pool and then just to see where we are 10 years now because yeah. it's been 10 years which is insane yeah but you know billy's doing awesome stuff justin's incredible he's yeah. i mean he's still incredible he's doing awesome stuff with the indiana yeah. drones it's really cool Rafool, we're on the same playlist with Rafool, right yeah. the spotify playlist that we got placed on i think yeah. he's That's on solid. there and so are the blue stones yeah so it, i mean that yeah, blue stones are made yeah. Yeah, yeah just uh and, and it goes in hand in hand with what you were saying earlier with like the talent pool locally it's just incredible but mm-hmm. i feel fortunate enough to just have grown up with those guys and even though i don't know them personally it's just really cool to see how, like every where everyone's gone and yeah so so for us like in our high school days uh, we were heavily influenced by by a, a single teacher in our high school years yeah would you say that like cardinal carter has the same thing yes 100 yeah. percent. he's no longer there his name is mr momini shout out to uh mr momini thank you uh he he really pushed me and he would uh first off i'd like to say that he'd like to uh let us choose whatever music we wanted to learn so a lot of the which stuff which is amazing which and is incredible more teachers should do that yeah shout out. And, and he would do this thing. He was just like, you know, there's this like thrash band called Creator from the 80s. Uh, I shouldn't tell you to listen to them, but go listen to them. <laughs> you know, uh, Rain and Blood by Slayer? Yeah, it's not very Catholic, but go listen to it. <laughs> like, and, he was, and he always pushed me with people who were like, who had been playing for like two, three years. And that helped me progress so much. And I was such an awkward kid in high school. So in like, high school? In, <laughs> a lot better than what I am. Oh, 100%. Now. You're, 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 yeah. Yeah. A lot better than what I am. Way the fuck out of here. I was going to say, you should but, hear this uh, guy off air. Holy yeah. hell. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, he, he helped push me and helped like teach me a bunch of stuff, even though there's like 20 other kids he has to focus on. So uh, if uh, he's listening, thank you very much. Awesome. We had that with Jim Chichira. Yeah. We actually Huge. want to get him on the show. We do want to yeah. get him on the show. He retired too, but yeah. it was the same thing. Like uh, I started drums when I was in grade six, and then when I got to high school, he just I don't know. He took a like a shine to me and took a shine to you and Pete, yeah. Mark, Darren, like oh, yeah. fucking everybody. Um, but a lot, a lot of uh, like heavy talents came out of that uh, those classes. Yeah, yeah like all well, of, Tea Party came from Tea him. Party, Ashton Tommy, Soma. all those guys. Yeah. All right, so we are massive fans, as we've already talked about multiple times. So if, I know I've asked you in the past and you avoided my text (laughs) for weeks, and I don't care where your excuse is, but can you play one? Yes, yes okay. we can, and um, we what decided on uh, "Is This Anger" from the "I'm Not Normal" EP. Fuck, we came yeah, up with a cool uh, acoustic arrangement of that, and uh, so when you do it, you have to develop like a whole new style of playing that song. Yeah, yeah. to do 100%. acoustic. Yeah, Brian had Brian and I kind of passed the acoustic guitar back and forth, writing parts for it just to get something cool. And then uh, once we had the ideas down, he came back. We did another rehearsal, and he had uh, some new writing that was great. But at it, least he had a me. week notice. Yeah, <laughs> it worked out. It worked so out. So here yeah. we go. We're gonna hear what. What are we hearing? Um, is this anger? Is from this anger? I'm not normal. All right, so here we go. Let's set this up. It's getting hard to see, 
And losses don't mean much to me Completely free with nothing I am now It's eating me away This thing that's in my brain Is sinking in And I don't wanna be so numb I can't find my way Do you hear that sound? The melody that's on me And wanting me to show you're not around Do you hear it now? It led me to these words to say it will replay, but it's leaving me for now I won't find my way in time I can't be the same as I tried to be this time when I'm I can't find Is it just me, or is everybody fake and falling apart in plain sight? And this melody is keeping me awake and falling apart in the dead of I can't find my way I won't find my way And I can't be the same as I tried To be this time and I can't find my way Holy oh fuck. God. Okay, was... hang on. You and I have said this many, many times that somebody coming in and playing live for us is like the greatest thing we've ever seen. Absolutely. Because it's so intimate, it's so up close, and yeah. you guys fucking rock. Like, Thank you're you. so Thank good. You. So good. Yeah, you guys killed it. Holy shit. Yeah. All right, guys. So before we end the show here, if people want to reach you on socials, how do they reach you? So uh, we're on Facebook. Uh Twitter, I would not recommend. We do not go on Twitter. <laughs> Neither no, do we. I'm, I'm working on uh, cleaning it up right yeah, now. I'm so, going gonna, gonna to go on an unfollow spree and really try to rebuild it. We, so, yeah. we have a Twitter. We never use it. Does anybody use it? I, don't, I, I use people? Twitter like crazy um, for gaming, actually. It's really, really good for personal connections. Yeah? Yeah. All right, fair. So, yeah. So, to find us, we're on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. That's primarily the socials you'll find us on. And what's the handles? And the handles are, for Facebook, it's uh, P-O-T-P Band. On Instagram, it's Part of the Plan Band. And then on YouTube, uh, it's like some random like I don't know, letters and numbers and <laughs> yeah, stuff. So just YouTube, type in, just part, type of in part of the Plan. And don't click on Dan Fogelberg. Or he Chris shows Brown. Up. Or Chris Brown, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll find our music. You'll find our uh, music videos. And vlogs that we used to do we used to kind of just uh i mean we still kind of do that now like film us uh doing random stuff yeah we have uh yeah we have one that's uh 
that we're going to release hopefully soon. It's uh, our trip to Philadelphia last year. Yeah, nice. yeah. Great. So that was pretty cool. What a great city. Or yeah. just go to your Facebook. Or yeah, and yeah, they can find Facebook. everything there. Yeah, exactly. Check us out on Facebook, and you can definitely find everything there. Yeah. And you know, we didn't give a shout out to the other members in the band because yeah. we've only got the two of Fuck. you here. <laughs> <laughs> we're kidding, guys. We love you. Uh, All right. Yeah. You want to give him a shout out? So shout outs to um, Martin Schultz. Uh, what's his socials? I believe he's at. Uh, he's got two. If you look up Mario of the Potty on uh, Instagram, as well as Martin Schultz Drums on Instagram, you'll uh, check out his personal and professional pages. Um, Dan Woods, uh, I believe, is uh, DNLWDS on Instagram. And uh, Kyle Mastronardi is I don't actually Kyle know. Mast. It's yeah, Kyle, Kyle Mast, Mast at Kyle Mast on Instagram.com. Those are our personal slash professionals. Um, mine's uh, at Cody J. Weldon, and then yours is? Brian Sandy Toes. Yeah, so if you want to keep up with the individual members, that's how you can find us. Um, some of us are more active than others, but uh, come say hi, and I'm sure you guys, we'll interact. Do you guys respond to your fans if they message you? Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Solid. So that's the best way to get a hold of you. That's yep. it. That's it. Message them directly. Just yeah. don't send dick pics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unsolicited. <laughs> Unsolicited. Yeah, we've had, Unsolicited. At least ask them first and be like, hey, can I send you my penis? Yeah. <laughs> we've had some weird people send us stuff, but you know. We definitely I can imagine have. the shit you. We get it's, the same it's mostly shit on the It's mostly on the fan page, like yeah. the actual Facebook yeah, page. Somebody yeah. asked if they could like overdose on energy drinks or some shit. And yeah, like, Dude, and we're like, we're not really sure. Yeah. We're not doctors. And I don't recommend trying it for it's science. Like, sir, this is a Wendy's? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Part of the plan. Thanks for coming in, guys. And if they want to reach us, the two dudes. Yeah, we're two dudes at a mic.com. That's it, man. Yeah. Just go to the website. All our links are right there. So, guys, here we go. Grab those, uh, grab those shot glasses. Grab your beers. Whatever you got in your hand. All the dudes listening, male, female. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Cheers.